Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Brooke Berlin. Many of you know me very well by now. I live in Boulder, Colorado, and I am the North American uh, sales and marketing rep for Swalu Kalahari, which was one of the founding members of the National Geographic and Unique Lodges of the World. And so I decided that this would be a really great time for me to introduce you to some of my very dear friends and properties within that association that I know are doing some really incredible work for conservation and sustainability within the US next month in Canada. So I'm very happy to have my very good friend Kurt Bjorkman joining us today. He is the general manager of the ranch at Laguna Beach, which is kind of a home away from home for me. I've stayed there many times. Kurt and I do events together. Uh, Johan and I love staying there and then we can just walk right down to the beach and go for a walk or join in some of the art festivals that's going on there. It's just such a sweet spot. Um, I actually miss our s'mores a lot right now. Kurt has cultivated an amazing atmosphere of just exceptional service within his team there. Before joining the ranch at Laguna Beach, he was the founder and managing partner of Over Five Hospitality, a company that caters specifically to real estate developers and independent hotel operators who really do like to push the boundaries of the status quo, which again, I've seen him do at the ranch at Laguna Beach. He gained really incredible insights working with some very um, high-class, world-class brands, many of which you know, Norwegian Cruise Lines, Buena Vista Hospitality Group, the Desert Inn Las Vegas, the Mirage Corporation, Regent International, the list goes on and on. The man has such an exceptional um, CV behind him. And all of those things have given him such an amazing perspective on the hospitality industry. So again, I'm just really glad that he wanted to join us and tell you about the ranch at Laguna Beach. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Kurt. Take it away. All right. Thanks, Brooke. Um, well, uh, I want to start out by thanking Brooke for putting this together. These are incredibly interesting times. I know all of you, uh, I don't have to tell any of you that. Um, we're all getting through this together. But people like Brooke um, uh, really are the reason we'll get through it. So um, thanks, Brooke, for this. This is really special. And thanks to all of you who have joined us. Uh, today and interested in my property here in Laguna Beach, California. Um, it is, uh, I'm not biased at all. So when Brooke says it's special, it is really special. Um, I've been here for about 11 years um, and with my family, we live just a few miles from this uh, 87 acre resort uh, in, a, in this canyon in Laguna Beach. Um, I'm very proud of this property. We completely renovated it. Uh, it needed a lot of love. It was kind of a um, much it needed a lot of love about six years ago and so we spent two years renovating the property we closed it down and we took that time during that couple years to focus on what we could do from a sustainability standpoint and do some things that were meaningful and um, legitimate not, um, not kind of greenwashing uh, and then we were able to join the National Geographic Unique Lodges um, group uh, a few years after that, um, after going through that vetting process, which was a, an amazing process. And to be with this group of uh, resorts, um, like uh, the one Brooke represents, Swallow, uh, are, is, is pretty overwhelming um, for us, especially when I attend these uh, conferences in the past where we could actually physically get together and meet the owners and operators and representatives of these incredible special places. To be part of that is, is incredible. Um, so we're very honored and I'm really honored to be speaking to all of you travel advisors who um, are um, uh, Who work so hard to make our industry work properties uh, around the world appreciate your business uh, and, the, and the efforts you put into taking care of your clients and when you send them to the ranch I promise they'd be taken care of exceptionally well um, so I was going to go through a, a PowerPoint presentation, a slide presentation. Um, Brooke, tell me if I'm if I'm doing this right, uh, everybody. Brooke is not only doing all of this, but this is my first Zoom presentation. So um, uh, forgive me again if if I'm not doing it correctly. Uh, but I believe my screen should be up. Am I there, Brooke? Okay. So. All right, so the ranch at Laguna Beach, um, this is a screenshot, this is our hero shot. Um, I'm looking at another screen, so I'll be back and forth. Um, but uh, we're in a canyon in South Orange County, so we're very, uh, we're about 60 miles south of Los Angeles. 
Our nearest airport is John Wayne uh, International Airport, about 20 minutes from that airport, um, uh, 35 or 40 if there's some traffic. We're across the street from the Pacific Ocean. We're not directly on the ocean, uh, but we're 365 yards walking from the beach. We have a private beach path that goes over there, goes under the highway, and then we have a beach cafe there as well. Um, but you can see this beautiful um, setting. It, it really doesn't, in my opinion, get much better than that. It's a, a unique in Southern California to be able to have a, a location like this. Um, we are part of National Geographic Unique Lodges. We're a, um, we're a Forbes recommended property. We're also Four Diamond AAA. Uh, we are um, that, that world's best from travel and leisure. Uh, we're gonna update that as of this morning. We're nominated, we're actually voted as the 10th best resort in the entire state of California. So Brooke doesn't know that yet. So um, we just literally got that email this morning. Uh, so we're celebrating that today, 10th, 10th best resort in the entire state of California. Um, and that's, that's because of my incredible team. So we're very proud of that. Um, kind of a snapshot of what you just saw from map overview. I won't go too much into this, but we're, a, we're as far as needing to socially distance and be kind of spread out and feel good about um, not being right on top of each other, we're ideally situated um, uh, with a campus style resort. So we have 17 buildings spread out over our hotel area is over three acres. Um, that it takes uh, three acres of our entire 87 acre campus um, spread out with the restaurant, uh, lodge, hotel building, spa, and the pool areas. And then we have this beautiful creek that runs right through the golf, uh, golf and resort area. Uh, that's a very special protected creek. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to read every slide. But we have 97 rooms, so we are a uh, we're a boutique property. Uh, we're larger than most in the collection of National Geographic. We're considered like, it, it, you know, if I was looking at other hotels, we're like the mirage of National Geographic hotels. We're we're, we're pretty big, uh, but not in not in property overall acreage. I'm tiny, but in guest rooms, pretty big. Um, we have some uh, some great rooms. One of our premium suites is called the Treehouse. It's a six. It's a 1,300 square foot, maybe a little more, uh, two-story, uh, beautiful house that sits up on a hill. We have 20 cottages, which are these 1,120 square foot, um, uh, two-bedroom, two-story two, uh, two -story suites that are pretty amazing, have two private uh, decks. We have uh, Creekside Studios, these really special rooms along the creek uh, that are a little just expanded, larger guest rooms. We have 20 uh, I mean, sorry, 64 standard rooms, which are 464 square feet, uh, king beds, um, and our rooms are uh, all decorated in a really um, kind of warm, and Brooke, you, you've stayed here, so you know uh, they're, they don't feel typically hotelish. Um, they are uh, designed by um, our owner and our owner's family who owns a design center here in Laguna Beach. Uh, they feel very, um, the, the goal was for people to feel two things when they walked in. One was to feel like they got a big warm hug, and the other was uh, that if you were to be transported here without knowing where you were and you opened your eyes, you'd say, oh, I think I'm in Laguna, with the artwork that's specific to Laguna Beach and the feel and the kind of found furniture items. All the rooms are identical, but everything feels somewhat found and um, highly designed, so it's, it's really special, special rooms, and we'll look at some pictures. We have uh, three... Um, uh, a par 32 golf course, nine holes, um, 2,200 yards. It, it's it's an, it's an incredible golf course. It's voted one of the best nine hole golf courses in the entire country. Um, uh, it's it's a very busy golf course, 200 rounds a day. Mostly locals like to play there, but guests who come in um, really enjoy this really special canyon environment. You don't see any homes. You're surrounded by protected wilderness, um, actually a conservation area, um, and it's it's very special. We have a nice um, spa called Sycamore Spa. Sycamores grow in our canning naturally, so we call our, our spa Sycamore Spa. Um, it's, uh, it's just small, four treatment rooms. It's um, a really well-appointed spa, though. There's every service you could ever imagine. We have a great dining room called Harvest. It's our three-meal restaurant. Um, you'll see pictures of that. It's phenomenal. 
of a few other food and beverage outlets some grab and go areas our pool bar uh in room dining of course and then which is really popular right now and then um lost beer cafe which is our beach cafe uh, at the beach we operate that cafe at the beach and uh, your guests can go over there and charge to their rooms and have beach chairs set up for them and uh set up uh fire pits for them and have a, an amazing experience. We also have group and, and event space. So we do quite a few corporate groups and events and weddings. Um, and then um, all the regular amenities you'd expect from a, from a luxury resort, luxury lifestyle resort. This is our canning room. So all of the rooms here um, have kind of a board and bat wall and, and custom art. Uh, this is our standard room again, 425 square feet. We have 64 of these. Um, these are our Creekside Studios, so just uh, we have um, nine of these, and this is a little larger, expansive version of the, the room I just showed you, just a little si uh, seating area separate. Um, we have cre three of these really cool rooms at Creekside uh, One Bedroom Suites, um, about 900 square feet, gives you that extra bedroom. The couches also uh, uh, pull out, so you can use that as a separate bedroom. It's got a little wet bar area really, uh, or in, they look right over the creek, which is a great view. Um, our cottage, two bedroom suites here, you're showing, this picture is of the lower um, living area. Again, really big, 1120 square feet. Families love these rooms. Um, there's a, one bedroom has a king bed and the other bedroom has a queen bed and then downstairs is a queen pull out, a dining room table, um, a small wet bar with a coffee, uh, we have um, Nespresso, uh, you know, machines to make your uh, coffee in the morning and also a new product um, that we use called uh, steeped coffee. So we don't use any plastic on property. That's a given, hopefully. Uh, but uh, it's, a, it's almost like a tea bag for your coffee. So you literally brew your coffee with this tea bag in a kettle. Everything's uh, um, compostable, actually uh, not even commercially compostable, but it, it goes right in our, in our compost bin back at our garden, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Uh, which is, that was, it took us a year to find this coffee and we're really proud of it. Um, and you can get really, really strong regular coffee, which is my, uh, one of my must haves. Uh, this is a tree house. So it gives you an idea of the, this is the living area of tree house. It was originally, the, the property was built in the 1960s and this was the residence of um, the, the original owner who developed this, Mrs. Uh, Violet Brown, who had a really keen eye for, for interesting architecture. It's a hexagon shaped two story house and it's a really special place. We kind of maintain the integrity of the kind of the funky historical features of it. There's a lot of teak, uh, hand uh, hewn, no nail uh, teak staircase that goes upstairs those fun uh, honeycomb hive uh, tiles. But we did modernize the kitchen. There's a full kitchen here, three full bathrooms. Um, we did modernize everything so it's very comfortable. And this is a very sought after uh, suite. Um, unfortunately, I only have one. Um, I wish I had about 10 of these. Oh. All right. So um, more pictures of the tree house uh, and a few other rooms. So. Um, you can see the kitchen up on the upper left-hand corner, and then you can see the picture on the right. The treehouse sits up there um, in the, uh, up on a hillside, looking out over the golf course uh, and the canyon areas. You wake up in the morning, you look down from about 100 feet above the, the canyon, and you see deer and all the creatures that make our canyon home. Uh, the master suite uh, room there is on the lower left, and then a fire pit area there on the right. So you have the obligatory California fire pit with the 80-year-old oak tree looking out over you. It's, it's a special place. Our spa, again, it's a really simple, nice spa, but very well appointed. We have, um, again, four treatment rooms, a couple's room, a lot of outdoor features. We have a great fitness center with uh, TechnoGem equipment um, that's really um, high level, it kind of knows who you are when you step on it. It knows where you ate that morning, which is never good, but it gives you that, uh, the, uh, you know, kind of enthusiasm to have to work out. And in our pool, uh, we have this beautiful pool um, that has a palapa bar and um, full service food and beverage uh, down there, uh, saline pool and, and hot tub. Our restaurant is a super special place. It's a big restaurant. Um, uh, it's 240 seats. It has a lot of, um, uh, everything is a, about bringing the outdoors inside. So as much as we can keep open air, it's very high pitched ceilings, 30 foot tall ceilings, 
massive glass windows looking out over the canyon. Um, the entire side of the restaurant opens up. We can roll these windows back and completely open up to fresh air, which we do almost every day here in Orange County. And a massive, uh, beautiful fireplace that you can cozy up to on uh, chilly mornings or uh, cold uh, winter afternoons. Um, but it is, uh, it's a, in a phenomenal place. Our chef, Kyle St. John, is, is exceptional. And um, we continue to uh, get great um, awards and recognition there. It is one of the most sought after local restaurants in uh, South Orange County. So it's a very busy restaurant, but we make priority reservations for hotel guests. But we always thought the hotel guests will want to go where the locals go. And so this is what we created. And thank goodness we were able to. It sits apart from the rest of the resort. So it doesn't feel like a hotel restaurant. You're not walking through guest room areas to get there. It's a, it's a beautiful environment. Um, and we have on the patio adjacent to that. Um, we just finished building seven brand new massive fire pits. Um, and I'm all in tune now with gas BTUs. We have 2.1 million BTUs of gas fire pits. So if anyone understands that, uh, it's about 15 pool heaters worth of fire pits. So I'm very excited for those to fire up literally uh, in, a, in a few days. Um, but we have live music out there every single day, 24-7, uh, or two, 365 days a year, I mean, and um, unless it's just pouring rain. But uh, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. every day, we have live music, the fire pits, um, and there's this beautiful canyon view. And we are part of, and we'll go into more of our sustainability efforts, but um, Surfrider Foundation in California and around the country actually is uh, one of the foremost uh, protectors of the beach environments. Um, their corporate headquarters are here in Orange County. We're good friends with them. They started and we were the very first Laguna Beach restaurant to get what they call ocean friendly certification. So um, because of what we do there with our no plastics initiative, no, there's zero plastic beverage bottles on property, if at all. Um, and then uh, we also uh, use sustainably caught seafood, which we, we don't purchase um, really from the large scale uh, per, seafood providers. We purchase from people we know down in uh, the local uh, docks, Dana Point, Newport Beach, the Dory Fleet and the Harbor Fleet. We, we purchase seafood from them and we kind of get what they catch. So when, you know, one day we'll roll through the restaurant with a wheelbarrow with a giant yellowfin tuna or uh, like a, a, some sort of massive fish. Uh, but that's, that's, that's what we do. So we know um, if you've been to in, in, in Hawaiian Islands and you go to Mama's Fish House and it has on a chalkboard who caught the fish, where and how deep, we do the same thing. It's, uh, we didn't invent it, but we certainly like it. We got hook, hook to table. Some more views of uh, the canyon walls. Those canyon walls go up, just to put that in perspective, from the green there, the golf course, to the top is 600 feet. So it's, it's pretty dramatic. It's our little cafe we have on our porch. Um, in addition to coffee, it's full bar and, uh, and draft beers. Gives you an idea of the outdoor patio kind of vibe. Uh, we call it the porch because we don't want it to be formalized to feel a little you know, you do get food and beverage service and you get great attentive service, um, but it is a little less um, of a formal atmosphere. So you can kind of hang out on a rocking chair, grab a glass of wine. Um, Brooke, I know you and Johan were out there. Uh, it's a really special place. And again, very sought after. Um, our Lost Pier Cafe. So we're on the beach. Brooke, nod if I'm doing okay. Am I doing all right? Okay. <laughs> I tend to just go, and sometimes I have people in my uh, my um, on my team who give me little signals to say, you know, you need to stop talking, or or whatever. Get off! I get off topic. Um, but here are our Lost Pier Cafe. This is a really special place. Uh, it's right on the beach on Aliso Beach. It's a county beach. It's this beautiful big sandy beach. It's not a surfing beach. It's got a big shore break. So um, uh, there's a sport called skimboarding, which is really popular. It's these little wooden or now fiberglass thin, thin boards. And the kids throw them down on the sand as the water comes up and they surf into the waves. Uh, it's pretty amazing to watch, but it's one of the top 10 beaches in the, in the world for that. Um, but our little Lost Pier Cafe there is open um, every day morning um, until sunset and uh, you can get um, wine and beer and sit right on one of those tables. We make uh, beignets, kind of Cafe Du Monde style. So there's powdered sugar all over the ground. There's um, 
uh, amazing food. We do really, really high. Chef Kyle is a chef there as well, oversees the entire food and beverage program, very reasonable prices. But your guests can come over here, um, sit down and enjoy uh, this atmosphere and um, get all the, the service that you get at the ranch, but here at the beach. So it's kind of like a beach club a little bit. Um, <clears throat> this is our golf experience. So you can see the golf course kind of wraps through this narrow canyon. Uh, it is a box canyon, so it's only about 900 feet wide there at that narrowest point. It gives you a really amazing feeling of being kind of taken care of and held. People have a, as you know, when you hike through canyons and hike through the Grand Canyon, you get these kind of feelings of um, uh, grandeur of, of things kind of ominously over you. You get that feeling here with these big, huge canyon walls. You feel very protected um, and you're completely removed from everything. You don't see any homes. You don't see uh, anything other than these beautiful natural hillsides, uh, again, which are protected. There are some plants that grow here on this canyon wall, and it's not in my presentation, but there's a plant called um, uh, the Laguna Beach Live Forever. It's Dudleya stolophania, and it's the only place in the entire world it grows on our canyon walls. So it's got a kind of a protected status. It's kind of cool for us to brag about that. And again, we have, uh, we call it the Laguna Beach Live Forever. I'm not sure why I live forever other than um, it's kind of a succulent plant. So I think it just keeps living forever, but they're very rare. Um, so <clears throat> sustainability is a big part of who we are. Um, we don't advertise, advertise ourselves necessarily as an eco resort. Um, we are a luxury lifestyle resort that really just focuses on trying to do the right thing. So I'm not an environmental expert. Uh, other people make a career out of that and do much better. I listen and learn from those amazing people. Um, I'm just a general manager uh, who really tries to do the right thing, but bringing in um, various organizations and us supporting various organizations is super important for us. So our golf course, um, part of National Geographic allowing us to be part of the Unique Lodges program is our golf course had to be certified um, for environmental uh, kind of a, to meet certain criteria. And the only one they really um, allowed us to use, there's a bunch of certification agencies, it's called uh, GEO, and they're based in Ireland. Um, and it's a great, great group. They came, actually flew out from Ireland and, um, and visited our golf course. And, uh, and we went through probably about a 1,200 page questionnaire on everything we had going on from chemicals to water processes. Uh, our golf course is also using fully reclaimed water, so it doesn't use any potable or drinking water. And uh, we did that once we renovated the property and we took, we saved 21 million gallons of potable drinking water a year for, the, for our community by switching over. And that was a massive undertaking. Um, Laguna Blue Belt is a, and I'm going to go through each of these because I think they're important. The Laguna Blue Belt, so our coastal areas of Laguna Beach are protected marine sanctuaries. You cannot fish. Uh, it's a no-take zone, and it also has federal monument status. So our beach outcroppings, the rocks and tide pools have uh, uh, United States federally recognized monument status, uh, which is super cool. But because of that, if you go um, kayaking or snorkeling or, or swimming, the sea life is incredible. The kelp beds, the, our, national, our, our state fish is called the Garibaldi. It's this beautiful orange massive fish. Um, sea lions, uh, and also right off the coast, in our community and Dana Point, which is a town just south of us, uh, have the most prolific, actually recognized number of, um, of dolphins and whales anywhere in the world. Uh, they all have to, the whales all have to go right by us. The Catalina Island is right off our coast, so the whales all come through this narrow channel of about 25 miles uh, to go down from Alaska to Mexico, so it in intensifies their presence um, every single type of whale from orcas to humpbacks to grays uh, come through here. It's amazing and the tours are incredible and the, and the sea life is abundant. But the Laguna Blue Belt helps protect all of that. Um, Adopt-a-Channel is fun. Our creek I, know, I mentioned earlier uh, is a 20 mile waterway that runs up into some mountain areas and it goes through six or seven different um, cities and it's channelized in some areas. It's more of a runoff for some cities, unfortunately, we're working on that. Uh, but to maintain that, we adopted kind of like an adopt a highway program. Orange County uh, allowed us to adopt a, a mile and a half section, um, about nine miles from our hotel upstream, where uh, three or four times a month, a bunch of us 
at the hotel, volunteers go up there and clean the creek channel out, remove garbage, remove graffiti, um, because uh, especially the garbage and anything that runs in there, it's all coming down our way. So we're trying to prevent that from happening. Um, and that's cool. We're, um, our creek is adopted um, by companies like um, Toshiba, Disney, um, but it, a lot of companies take it very seriously, this, these waterways. Um, Ocean-friendly restaurants I mentioned before. We're the first one in Laguna Beach. Uh, there's all, they're all over now. It's really important here. Uh, and, and I think if you're not doing that, you probably shouldn't be in the business, in my opinion. Um, the Laguna Canyon Foundation is our local conservation group that takes care of and manages, along with Orange County Parks, all of the conserved, conserved, conserved land. We have about um, 50,000 acres of cons conservation area <clears throat> in and around Laguna Beach right down to the beach and the hillsides that'll never be built up. And um, that's been through um, about uh, 50 years of major effort. You can imagine in Southern California, in Orange County, near the beach, um, where there's a high desire to develop every single square foot of, of available land um, years ago, including our owners stood on um, uh, in front of these areas and, and held hands and handcuffed themselves to bulldozers to make sure that didn't happen. And today, we have these amazing protected uh, resources that we find ourselves, our resort, um, smack in the middle of, which is incredible. So the Laguna Canyon Foundation, we support in every way. We have some guided hikes that our guests and groups can go on and uh, proceeds from the fees of those hikes go right to the Laguna Canyon Foundation. And then the Ocean Institute, super near and dear to my heart, is down in Dana Point. It's an um, incredibly worldwide recognized organization that does um, ocean uh, and environmental education for kids. And it's right on the harbor, right on the, it's, it's a really cool environment, um, but we do some fundraising for them and support them financially. And I'm on the board uh, there as well. Um, and it's super special. We do some camping outreach programs here at the hotel back in our golf course area, which I'll share in a second for kids who are at risk, um, kind of uh, low income kids, about 300 kids a year. Not this year, unfortunately. Um, no one wants to go camping with 35 or 40 kids um, close by. So, uh, but this would have been our fifth year doing this program. Uh, it's at no cost to the kids or the organization. So like boys and girls clubs and these different groups come in uh, from areas that are not near the ocean in California that maybe never experienced camping or being outside or going to the beach. And we um, let them camp overnight and feed them, have a great time. And then the Ocean Institute provides them the educational aspect of that experience. So it's a, it's a pretty, pretty, it's life changing for them. And it's transformative, transformative for all of us to see this, see, see the smiles on these kids' faces, um, experiencing the nature for the first time. And it has, and we know for a fact, since we've been doing it for five years, we've seen the results of some of these programs and the kids have gone on to become, they're in master's programs now in environmental science education, which is super cool. Um, so just to kind of kind of re-go through some of our things, um, we have our uh, water reclamation project. So we use only uh, reclaimed water on all of the hotel grounds and the golf course. Um, and that basically means the water, that's runoff water or water that's uh, kind of removed from all the solids is, is uh, cleansed through a reverse osmosis pr process and we can use it for landscape irrigation. It's very clean water um, and, and it's kind of uh, fun to watch that process. It's about two filters away from being drinkable. Um, I won't drink it, but uh, it's two filters away. We have our harvest garden. You'll see a couple pictures. We have a half acre organic garden in the back where we pull a lot of our food for the um, for the restaurant. Um, Planet or Plastics, of course, National Geographic's push. Planet or Plastics, choose one or the other. Uh, we choose, of course, the planet. Uh, we do a lot of, we have no, of course, we were, um, you know, uh, on the straws. No, no, there are no plastic straws. We're using these um, bamboo straws, which are, or actually hay straws. We're using hay straws right now. So they're made out of actually stalks of hay. Um, uh, the paper straws, as you probably all know, are fun, but um, you need about six of them to drink one iced tea before they disintegrate. Um, adopt a channel, surf, uh, surf rider, ocean friendly, and an adventure camp, which is that camp I just talked about with the, um, the at-risk youth. So <clears throat> probably one of my favorite things that we do is, and I know Brooke loves this, um, I actually took her out and we showed uh, exactly how we crush these, these bottles. So 
Um, uh, there's a, a there's a an environmental world um, something we learned being on a golf course and being across the street from a beach. Uh, you know, as a, those of you who play golf, you're probably very familiar with the sand traps. Um, I know I am. But uh, the bunkers on the golf course use a very fine, very expensive kind of sand that's uh, very rare and difficult to get. And um, a lot of places are buying sand for their golf courses uh, that they don't know where it comes from. And it's actually being illegally harvested from beaches in Northern California or down in Mexico. Uh, it's really bad for the environment. Um, sand is, a, is a, becoming a very uh, finite resource. You can get sand, unfortunately for, uh, for whatever you believe uh, this to be, but for fracking, the sand is abundant. There's millions of uh, acres of sand sand dunes in Texas where they can use that for fracking. Um, but for sand that you use in construction, for building homes, highways, your glass windows, um, you're surrounded by things right now in your home office or looking at your computer screen that were made out of sand. Um, and it's becoming more and more rare. It's a becoming a problematic resource. So um, <clears throat> we are doing our small part in every glass bottle that we have on property. Instead of sending out to be re recycled, which is a great thing, but only 40% of the glass bottles you send out, you put in your recycle bin, they go off to who knows where. Um, it doesn't all come back as reused glass. Uh, only 40% does. So um, and there's a lot of different reasons for that. D depends on municipalities and things, but um, we don't send any of it out, which also helps with our uh, carbon footprint of the big, the weight of that going out in these big trucks. Um, so we crush the glass into sand. And there's a company in New Zealand called GL Sand. Um, and anyone who wants to know more about it, I'm happy to share. But they've created a really simple process for pl places like ours to be able to crush these bottles and then sift it into different types of sand. So I've got um, the sand is right here. This is what it ends up looking like. So the bottles you see on the screen there. So that's the sand right there, you can see. And it comes. <laughs> It kind of looks like uh, Himalayan sea salt. Don't make that mistake. Um, but uh, um, we crushed 50 tons of sand last year. And if we hadn't been um, shut down due to COVID-19 and the pandemic, we were on track to do 100 tons of sand this year. We had already crushed 20 tons in the first two months of 2020 um, because everybody's drinking a lot. So um, the... Uh, um, we're really proud of that. We use this sand in our sand bunkers on the golf course. We also, once we, we actually have so much sand that we can actually give it to other people who need it for sandbags, for construction projects. Um, but it's a really neat process and something we're really proud of. We were the first, um, we, we say we're the first in a lot of things. It's, it's, it's just because we're kind of bird dogish on um, looking for opportunities, but we're the first uh, company at all in the entire uh, North American continent to get this machine. Uh, we're really proud of that. Now they're everywhere, which is awesome. And a lot of National Geographic lodges are using them as well, because you can imagine, say, uh, uh, in Fiji, you know, everyone wants to enjoy a nice bottle of wine, but that bottle, once it's empty, it, there's nowhere for it to go. So why not turn it into sand, um, which is cool. And it's very safe, environmentally uh, um, conscious kind of Thing. So we're, we have a lot of fun with that. Um, and we continue to crush every bottle uh, on property, even when we're not selling as much as we used to. Got it. Okay. I think I'm good. I think I'm, I'm, I'm hopefully good. <laughs> Our room keys. Um, so we, uh, um, room keys in North America, obviously all over the country. A lot of people are going to their phones to be able to um, unlock doors. Um, we're not there with that, but um, instead of using plastic room keys, which most people unfortunately like to take their room keys home as a, as a memento or they just throw them away, um, uh, we are, were able to eliminate 25,000 room keys a year being um, uh, basically just gone. That's how many we're buying every year, 25,000 room keys for a 97 room hotel. Um, that's plastic. That's uh, very bad. They end up in landfills. They're not being recycled. Um, some of them might end up in a drawer in somebody's house. So we switched to, so all that's in a plastic room key is a little RF uh, ID chip. It's tiny. So we switched to these really cool um, sustainably harvest bamboo keys. 
uh, again, you can throw these in the landfill and they disintegrate on, and, or you can take it home as a souvenir. Uh, we really thought we would be um, buying a lot more of these uh, than the plastic room keys, but it turns out when you do the right thing, people recognize it and then they do the right thing. It's amazing, uh, new concept there. But um, the, uh, the guests are turning these in a lot more. So um, they, they recognize that this is a resource and not something they can just throw away or keep. Um, we welcome them to keep them, by the way. But um, uh, more, more people than not are turning them in. So now we get them turned in, we sanitize them, and then reuse them. Um, but uh, we're really proud of this. And again, taking a lot of plastic out of the environment. And um, I'm surprised more people aren't doing this. Um, this is something new for us. So again, with glass being problematic in sand, um, we've switched to a California company called Path Water. So um, it's an aluminum reusable water bottle right here. Um, so you can reuse this. I've had this one for about six months now. Um, so instead of buying a bottle of water and then um, you know, the glass bottle being a one-use bottle most of the time, people, uh, you know, throw it away and then we crush it in the sand, which is great. But this one you can just keep and reuse. So reuse is a lot better than recycle. So this bottle can be a keeper, a nice souvenir because it's got our logo on it. Um, and uh, <clears throat> we found this company from um, when San Francisco Airport, when SFO made the announcement, which was first in the country, um, not our market, but you know, way north of us, uh, that said they're not gonna have any plastic water bottles in the entire airport. Uh, if you go there right now, Path Water is the only bottled water you can buy. So um, that's how we found out about them. And then we worked with them for about three months as they're trying to figure things out. And now, uh, now we have these in the rooms uh, and around the property. They also have a great sparkling version, but we're proud of that. And aluminum, by the way, is one of the most recyclable so if you do recycle this, 99% of aluminum ends up being reused and recycled. Um, we do have bath products, so we're, we're not doing, California actually, um, it's not in effect yet, but it will be later in the year where you're not allowed to use a little bathroom amenities at all. So um, we're using um, La Bottega, which is a really high end distributor and creator of some really cool amenities. So these bottles um, mount right to the shower wall and they're completely reusable and refillable. And um, uh, my thing with these, I had a lot of, I, I completely support the idea of these wall mounted pumps and ideas, but I also have a big uh, kind of a problem maybe with the ick factor in certain places where I don't want other people to have been able to open it and mess with the, the stuff inside the bottles. That's my personal thing. But I, that's the first thing I think of is like, oh, somebody could have, you know, I don't know. Um, so these are completely sealed. They don't have a key lock on them. They're really attractive and beautifully made. We found these at our um, Forbes Luxury Summit, which I attended in February in Las Vegas. Uh, and there's a brand new um, announcement for these are incredibly well-made, beautiful. Um, and we're using uh, uh, Mal and Getz uh, product, which is, it, you, a lot of you will know what that is. It's an amazing product, smells really good, organic cruelty-free, made in the United States. So um, uh, we're, we're really excited about that. Anytime you can say you have cilantro conditioner and rum body wash, I think I'm in right there. Um, we have a, our garden, which is back at an area called Scout Camp. So in the back of our property, we have a two acre kind of reclaimed area, this natural spot for events and gatherings. And that's where the kids camp when they come back there. Um, but a half acre of that is this organic garden. And farmer Leo, uh, who I just uh, saw just earlier this morning, um, takes care of this garden. It's a completely organic garden. There are no pesticides. Every single bit of wet food waste. And this morning, um, I overheard him talking about taking all of our um, paper that we shred, all our documents and shredding and putting that into the compost. Uh, but we have thousands of pounds of compost that we use. So we don't, eat, we don't buy any uh, soil amendment products or anything. Everything's done naturally and um, everything in this garden goes to our harvest restaurant. And um, we do some really neat events out here with guests. So if you bring guests here, we do harvest garden tours. Um, we'll do receptions out here, um, meet, meet the gardener or meet the chef, pick your own salad events where you can come out here and, and snip your own salad and then enjoy it while sitting in this incredibly uh, amazing natural environment. 
um, Birds of Prey, Orange County is incredibly beautiful natural area, lots of raptors. Uh, eagles have been, uh, they're here in Orange County, uh, owls and hawks of every type, uh, but a lot of them get um, hurt and then there's this beautiful rescue facility up in a canyon, way up inside the uh, kind of a cool rustic canyon area. But they come here every Saturday and they bring in their um, rescued birds that can't be re-released because they can't fly or they're hurt. And um, it's really cool. So they bring owls, they have an eagle called um, Billy Idol and, um, and these little screech owls. And it, it's really amazing. Some people have never seen something like that before. Local adventures, hiking. This, this view here on the upper left is right above our hotel. That's called the Valido Trail. You can walk from our hotel to that spot. Um, whale watching, I mentioned, it's incredible. Surfing, of course, it's Orange County. I don't need to say anything about that, but surfing and water sports cultures is huge. And then our garden, um, uh, that's an actual picture we took just a, a, about three weeks ago when our sugar snap peas were going off. Uh, they're all gone now, but um, we're growing tomatoes in their place for the winter. And that's our presentation, um, <clears throat> the nickel tour, so to speak. Let me know if you have any questions, um, comments. Um, we do have availability and uh, we are open for business. I love it. Thank you so much, Kurt. That was just fantastic. You did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> um, many people that know me know that I'm somewhat of a character and I like to work with people that have personalities and share stories as well. And I mean, I've known you for years and I still learned something on this. Um, I think especially those of us that really are so tapped into conservation, I mean, to your point, we love getting together and learning from one another. And as I, you know, kind of wait for certain questions to be coming in as, as they might end up being, uh, you're right, the sand, the, the glass crushing is something that is so near and dear to my heart. And if anybody is curious to learn more, um, I was looking it up while Kurt was talking, the book that I first read a couple of years ago is called The World in a Grain. And it's the, the story of sand right now. I know and many of us with Nat Geo have read that book. And it was the first time that I, I think really learned what is going on in the world around with sand. And many of the Nat Geo lodges, as you mentioned, in Africa, and then many others use it as well. And so then something that is also near and dear to my heart is that the ones in Africa, many of them work with Sidi in Ghana, one of the top bead designers in Africa, and they take that sand and they turn it into glass and then they make it into jewelry. And then it's like, there's cool. so many different things there. So yeah, I really do love um, you speaking about the, uh, the sand and the glass crushing. So I've got a couple of questions coming in. Um, activities for children now during COVID. Yes, um, so that's been a moving target. Uh, we've actually, we do, we have some great activities. Um, we have a, a golf camp through the summer, so that's a, a five-day uh, intensive, cool, fun golf camp for kids 6 to 12, 9 a.m. to noon. And then we also, starting um, in, uh, on, I think, the 15th, we start our first kids program. So every day there's a new kids program that involves, it's a drop and go for kids 6 to 12 and um, uh, involves a lot of nature activities, going out to scout camp looking for paw prints, um, learning about uh, raptors or butterflies in the, in the natural environment here. So um, we do have some really cool things. Those are complimentary to our hotel guests. Uh, but yeah, we do have that. We don't have an all day kids drop and go program. So you're gonna have to spend at least a half a day with your children, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt actually was one of the first properties in the collection to reopen and we had a kind of all hands on Nat Geo conference where he was sharing a lot of the opening protocol exactly what they did to get the ranch and the staff all ready to go um, to share the experience of what it was like to kind of come out of lockdown and stay at home and all of a sudden have staff coming back have guests coming back um, so he was very much at the forefront of even educating the rest of the lodge all around the world as to how to best reopen. Right. Uh, you did a very good job with all of your details on the presentation. We don't have many questions. <laughs> but I think that's because you are so detailed. <laughs> um, um, I will talk about um, kind of our, our COVID 
stuff, I guess, real quick. Our, our, so we're certified by the California Hotel Lodging Association as uh, safe and well. So we had to go through a, a training process. So we didn't make up our own um, guidelines on how to sanitize and do all of, of the, the right things. Um, but we're doing everything you're probably hearing about in other places that are slowly opening up. We're not open 100%. We're kind of maintaining a 70% or less occupancy so people feel more comfortable social distancing. There's not as much of a crush of crowds. Um, as of uh, last week on Friday or Wednesday, the governor of California closed all indoor dining for three weeks in the state of California, or at least in 19 counties, which is 90% of the, the state. Um, so we've, uh, luckily we have a lot of outdoor dining options. So we just still have breakfast, lunch, and dinner out on that beautiful patio and still live music on another patio, very expansive, beautiful environments. But then that Harvest Restaurant indoor dining will reopen in two weeks. Um, but we are doing everything sanitizing, using all the right OSHA approved, CDC approved chemicals. Masks um, uh, are mandatory when you come onto property. It's a California state law. All our team members will be in masks. And then um, our guests will be in masks unless they're at a dining room table or in their guest room. Um, uh, but if you're interacting with team members or within six feet of any other person, you have to have a mask on. And that's, that's the California law there. Kurt, can you speak about kind of the best um, length of stay? And if someone were to stay for a long weekend versus a week, kind of um, a typical flow of what they would do. And then within that also seasons and festivals, you know, I mean, I know for instance that Laguna has an amazing art scene. So if people were looking to plan how many days and then best time of year for really interesting things going on in town. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, our seasons are um, summer and fall, winter, so really of two seasons. Um, summer, which is basically uh, Memorial Day through Labor Day. And uh, those are, that's our high season in Laguna Beach. Laguna Beach sees um, uh, 6 million visitors a year to our little town of 25,000 residents, uh, seven miles of coastline. Um, it is a bohemian artist culture, so there's a lot of world-class galleries here. Um, Plein Air painting, um, Thomas Went. Uh, learned everything he did here. So it's an amazing place for art. So the typical stay uh, here, we're not in your, you know, if you're not familiar with Orange County, Disneyland is in North Orange County. So it's about a half hour, 45 minutes away from us. We're in South Orange County, beach centric, art centric, restaurant centric. So it's really a, an immersive experience. If you were to check in here, we suggest a, a four to five day stay. Uh, to enjoy the resort. A lot of people get here, we're, we've got a lot of space, so they just kind of feel very comfortable not going anywhere. But in town, there's so many art galleries, so many things to do. There's a festival of the arts that's famous with Pageant of the Masters, which is this world-class 50-year-old organization. They unfortunately are not going to be open this summer for all the reasons we know. But there's another one called the Sawdust Art Festival that will be opening up this month, uh, which is a, the first art festival that opened in Laguna Beach. And it's super cool, kind of is cool. They're literally sawdust on the ground as you walk around hundreds of these local artisans, um, high end. I mean, and you talk about, it's not um, uh, yokel locals. It is truly world-class art. Um, and and uh, a lot of really cool personalities, uh, really neat things going on. And then of course you have the beaches and the ocean activities and the hiking and, the, and even um, nearby uh, larger mountains to hike on. So yeah, th a four day, five day stay is really great. If you want to throw Disney into that or any of the parks, if you have kids, which you know we're a great place for families, um, add a few days for that as well. And a couple days after maybe just to <laughs> recover. Come down off of Disney. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell why Johan and I love it there so much. I mean, beach, hiking, wine, and art. Yeah. <laughs> when guests check in, are they having to have their temperature taken? What are the protocols for kind of the guest arrival during this time specifically? So right now we do have um, a temperature reading um, ability, but we're not doing that for our hotel guests. Um, there's a couple of reasons. We're being instructed uh, that that's not necessary by the CDC. Uh, and also there's some in our in our state in California, there are some interesting uh, privacy laws that can be problematic when you start um, kind of if you were to take somebody's temperature and then deny them service uh, and in, in any way that's somewhat public and it can't be not public, um, you're, you're 
making some personal declarations about their health. Uh, so we don't want to do that. But if they're if a guest comes here and they're showing symptoms of coughing um, or sneezing or uh, appear to be not well, we refuse service. Um, we haven't had that happen, thank goodness. Uh, our staff too, if they're not feeling well, we do take our staff temperatures, by the way. Um, and again, taking a temperature is just one of many ways you can determine whether somebody may or may not have uh, uh, COVID-19, um, but a person can have COVID-19 and not have a fever. So uh, sometimes it, most people who have it here in Orange County have not actually had symptoms. So we're trying to be careful there, but really we, we, uh, we're just taking all the precautions without um, making it uncomfortable for guests, but also um, making sure everyone knows it is a serious business. When you check in, you do get a full kit with masks, sanitizing, sprays, um, and then anything else you need while you're here, we're, we're able to provide. Mm -hmm. And I remember also just things that are coming to mind for me, walking by the volleyball court. We've done some incredible stargazing on property. Yep. Um, so there's lots of different things, I mean, truly going on for people to, I think, participate in from a family perspective or, mm -hmm. you know, for a group of friends getting together. Yep. And as of right now, we don't have any more questions. Um, oh, okay, actually we do. How is it housekeeping handled? Yeah, so um, good question. Uh, I should have brought that up. So we're providing three different options for guests. Um, we're, we're, of course, taking all the precautions with our team members. Our team members, first and foremost, safety is, is right there. So we don't want to expose our team members to anything. But um, the way we have it set up with all the personal protection um, equipment for our team members, we, we give our guests three choices. First is regular housekeeping service for daily service. We just don't allow the guests to be in the rooms during that process. Um, then we offer a once every three day housekeeping, um, so kind of a just kind of get your room straightened up after a few days. And we also offer no service. So if you want to have zero service during your stay and have no one come in, um, uh, we do that as well. So those are our options we're offering our guests. And I know you only had a couple of photos of it, but I just have to encourage people to look at that treehouse. It is so incredible. We've done events up there. I've been able to spend a lot of time there. It's, I mean, the rooms are spectacular, but the treehouse is also one of my absolute favorites. And for people that really do want that privacy and to be alone, as Kurt showed, I mean, it is away from the rest of the hotel. You're up, you have to go over the river, you go up a little, or sorry, creek, up a little road, and you could have an entire experience really up there as well. Um, so there are yeah. definitely great options for families and you know people that want more privacy than even just with the the hotel offers with the rooms yeah absolutely and treehouse even after covid it for all the reasons brooke just mentioned um is great too if you have guests who are interested in a lot of privacy uh during their stay it's a, it's a terrific place for that yeah i think so as well we can give it one more minute if there are any other questions. Um, but as I've kind of mentioned before, I will make sure that everybody gets a follow up with Kurt's email um, and contact information. So, you know, follow up as always possible. Oh, um, what is the maximum, maximum occupancy in the treehouse? So um, four people is comfortable. There's two full bedrooms in there, uh, but six is really max occupancy. We have the downstairs uh, area um, with, the, with the sofa um has a pull out beautiful pull out couch right in front of the fireplace um but if you want private bedrooms it's it's four and actually kurt explain the kind of like detached yurt yeah <laughs> that we've like, yeah. <laughs> so we have uh the treehouse 1100 square feet and then the, the they had built this really odd hexagon garage um to, to that cars actually would never fit in so just sat there as kind of a storage facility. So when we renovated, we turned it into this really beautiful, I mean, we call it the gazebo, but it's, it's, a, it's you know, a beautiful little room. There's a TV and seating areas. It's a great place to kind of get away, um, play some cards, do yoga, um, uh, have a little reception on your own, or, or maybe send the kids to, if, you have, if you're traveling with kids, it's a great uh, room for them to kind of experience. It has all the same views as the treehouse. It looks out over the entire canyon. So it's that, thanks for bringing that up, Brooke. It's a really cool little feature of the resort. Yeah, I love it there. 
Sweet. Well, thank you very much. Thank you to everyone who joined us today. We really appreciate your time. Um, and Kurt, just thank you so much. Your passion is just, it, it infuses all of the space around you all the time. I love learning from you and, and just seeing oh, what you guys are doing down there. So thank you very much. Thanks. And Brooke, again, thank you so much for putting these together. Uh, it means a lot to everybody in the industry. Um, if there's an award that can be had for this, I'm going to make sure you're nominated. Um, and thanks everybody for attending this. Uh, it means a lot that you would spend the time with us this morning. It really does. So um, uh, you're going to get my contact information. Um, reach out to me personally. I have a full sales and reservations team that's beyond amazing. Um, so your guests uh, and clients will be taken care of very well. But feel free to make a first point of contact myself directly. Excellent. Thanks. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great morning or afternoon. <laughs>